Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today I'm going to take a little trip over to my discus friend again and have a look, have a look at some of his discus. Um, have a look, yes. Put down in the comments how many you think of what I end up coming away with by the end of the video. Right, we'll see you when we're there. So I said before I came here that I wasn't going to buy any fish, or I was only going to look at the fish and make a decision. So what percentage of your customers buy more than they say they're going to buy when they come here, do you think? Oh, I, I wouldn't want to say, really, but <laughs> I do have certain customers that when they watch this will realise they um, they perhaps don't give the full truth to their partners when they get home. Yeah. Do you provide alternative receipts? <laughs> um, receipts are receipts, they get the receipts, but some people do come perhaps the day before and visit to have a look and perhaps make a part payment and then when they come with their partners the next day uh, pay the balance and it looks like it may be less than they've spent. <laughs> I don't charge any extra for that service. So there you go, obviously I couldn't resist. We ended up picking up three fish, um, so let's take a closer look. So they've only been in the tank a very short while at the moment but look at these absolutely fantastic patterns and fantastic colours to say that they might still be a little bit stressed from the journey. Look at that. So these are um, pigeon snake skins. I must admit, I did have a little bit of an ulterior motive when I went over there. I did ask Tim whether or not he had any pairs or if he got any in or heard of any to let me know because I wanted to get my breeding project on the road again. And then he sent me a quick video to say, oh yeah, I've got this pair, it's only a young pair, let me know if you're interested. So that's why I went over to have a look, and definitely they are quite the pair. So these are actually, these are what you would call an unconfirmed pair, so I think he said that they had laid either the night before or the day before. Um, but obviously not got anywhere and you don't have a confirmed pair or you shouldn't call them a confirmed pair until you actually get to the regular stage because technically these could be two females that just happen to both lay eggs at the same time and um, we think that that's the male on top and the female on bottom but yeah until you actually get fry you can't really call that confirmed uh, and to be fair to Tim at Corbin Discus, they don't, he doesn't call them pairs and he doesn't add any surcharge for a pair. Um, he just charges you per fish, so if you get two fish, you pay the price for two fish, you don't pay any extra just because they're a pair. Look at the colours and look at the pattern on that fish. Absolutely fantastic. They are quite a small pair, or quite a young pair, they definitely haven't reached full maturity, so I'm not sure whether I want to start breeding them straight away. I'd really love it if I could get some size onto them for a while before we start worrying about breeding them. 
But then, while I was there, as you can see, this guy here, I think it's a, a guy anyway, he really caught my attention as well, so I thought, well, seems I'm here, I'll pick up an extra one. <laughs> So this particular strain is a Martin Ung strain and it's called an Albino Bleeding Heart. I'm sure you might have seen similar fish from different breeders with different names. I've talked about this before, I think some of the naming conventions that they use for these strains are ridiculous. So the same fish, or a very similar fish at least, will be called different things depending on who bred the fish. But I just thought that was a really striking fish and oh this one is now blocking it. If you get out the way mister. The thing that really got me here was the, the clarity of the eyes and the face, obviously it being white. But look at the colour, the, the deepness of that red, given that it's only been in this tank a, a matter of minutes um, after what must be a very stressful bagging and transportation. It's already looking really, really deep, nice red colour. And they all look really good actually for being in here such a short time. So I thought that would make a really striking addition to the display tank. Um, quite a new strain, so if I was trying to be all fashionable, then you know, I'm keeping up with the Joneses. But it's a beautiful fish. So they're in here doing a little bit of quarantine. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to actually try and get these two to breed straight away. And when I say try, that's just to keep them on their own. And, power feed them. Um, I may do that anyway just to try and get some size onto them because one of the things that happens with uh, younger pairs is when they when they do pair off the female as soon as they start laying eggs regularly that's kind of it in terms of growth. The growth rate slows right down. Um, I mean it's not stunting as such but yeah they certainly don't grow at the same rate as a, a male of the same size because uh, they put all their energy into laying eggs. So we don't really want that, but if that's the way that they decide to go, if nature takes its course, then fair enough, we'll let them get on with it. And so I probably will keep these two in this tank for a while, hoping to treat it as a kind of grow out tank and I can get some food into them, get some size on, but if they do start laying because they're a pair, then that's also good. Other noticeable differences are they, I've put them in this tank now, so this is a tank that's higher up in the racking system. Um, previously, the last attempt, I think one of the contributing factors, just one of the factors, not everything, was they were in this tank, which is a bit down low and it directly faces the door as you come into the fish room. I think that might have been putting them off, whereas this one now is right in the corner, higher up. Um, I think that's at least taking some of the guesswork out of it, so th there are fewer factors now which can go wrong. Um, certainly some of the breeders that I've spoken to in the past, they say that the discus do like the higher up tanks and the less traffic, so being over here, I'm, going, I'm, I'm giving them the best chance. It's not necessarily a guarantee that they will breed here, uh, but I think that's at least giving them the best chance. So we'll give them a bit of a feed and see if they'll take a feed. It is early in um, being in here, um, but I've got some frozen brown shrimp all defrosted. And if you do, if you are interested in this and seeing what happens over the months and weeks in the future, whether they do develop into a pair, make sure you do click that subscribe button and then you won't miss any updates. But I'll give them a little bit of the old brown shrimp, which usually goes down well, but like I say, they have only been in here a short time. And I should really give a thank you to all you guys as well, because it's the fact that you guys are watching these videos it means I can afford this kind of thing. So this is almost funded by uh, the YouTube earnings, if you like. So a big thank you to everyone that supports the channel, whether it's by joining the channel and uh, contributing that way, or just by subscribing and watching. It all counts and it's all very much appreciated. So if you do want to keep up with what's going on, make sure you do click that subscribe button and then you won't miss any future updates. At least two of these fish are going to be in here for a while so we see what happens one way or the other. So there will be more videos in the future. In terms of the tank setup, it's just a plain, as you can see, bare bottom tank. It's got a sponge filter which won't stop floating for some reason on this side and a heater, that's all. Um, I might put in a breeding cone if they do start to get into it, but I don't really want to encourage them to it straight away. 
they're obviously not going to eat this food because I'm stood here filming them. Uh, but we're going to keep the temperature fairly warm, we're going to make sure the water's clean and we're going to try and feed them as much as possible. But I think only being in there for less than an hour, they're just a bit shell-shocked at the moment to be honest. So we'll leave them to it and they may well, when I go away, they may well come out and start picking away at this food. So, like I say, click the subscribe button and make sure you follow along if you want to see the updates in the future. But thank you very much to everyone that watches these videos. It's very much appreciated. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!